All right. Next, your so next. Okay, now for the most part, I show bits and pieces of games. I don't show the whole game. I show what's interesting. Today I had a good idea what was interesting because, you know, I did commentary all day. All right, so this is Vida versus Adiban. Black's been better the whole game, including here. And, um, uh, I mean, you can never take this because after DC, you know, that's, that's, that's a spicy meatball. Um, but I know if these pawns stay here, then you know, black doesn't have anything. Black has to attack these pawns. So black played bishop g4. If the rook moves, queen takes queen, wins the queen. If the queen takes and I take, that's really good for black. Get past c pawn on the sixth rank and never play f3. And Anand is like, man, f3, terrible. See, he knows. Then bishop f5 and it's ridiculous bishop. So he played the excellent bishop takes d5. And Anand was like, bishop takes d5, uh, great. And he claimed, the engine does not agree, but I actually agree with Vichy on this one, that after bishop takes, queen takes, white is in no danger of losing. Okay, which I agree with, but the engine does not. The engine says black's better. The engine likes being ahead material. Although, when you look at the engine lines, black just moves around doing nothing. So, and he thought this was a very easy draw, no problem, etc. Mainly, etc. I was surprised that Anand said mainly, etc. And then, that's what happened, bishop d5. And then he took, and then we choked on our own rage. He made the worst move. That's the best move. Rook takes is the second best move. And he did this, losing instantly. The worst move in chess history. And Anand was, I mean, Anand had no words, right? And Piper Lawyer went up to Anand and said, you know, what she said. And Anand said, do you need the words? And Piper Lawyer said, yes. And if you say them, I'll ne you'll never be able to take them back. And then Anand didn't say anything. Anybody get the Piper Lori reference? Anybody? Terrible. Come on, somebody. Get that reference. Anyone? I yeah, I was giving him a situation where Piper Lori was talking to Anand, but they don't get the reference. How'd everybody do? Big upsets? Eh, nothing. I don't know. Uh -uh. Brad reaching your screen. Yeah, I mean, I walked in on move one, and Brad was up a lot of material. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that really things. Okay. So you're going to let me know? Yeah, when I'm done streaming, I'll decide whether I go or not and surprise you or tell okay. you or something. Hey, the light looks fun. It does? All right. It's not the best. Uh, Piper Lori was in Twin Peaks. That is correct. That's not the reference, but, yeah. Bye, Bye sweetie. Your Treo gifted a sub. Never heard of Piper Lori. Boo! All right, you guys are all wrong about everything, which is shocking. Piper Laurie was in one of the best films of all time, The Hustler, with Paul Newman, Jackie Gleason, George C. Scott, etc., mainly etc., and Piper Laurie, and other famous people that you haven't heard of. Anyway, it was in 1961, and uh, Piper Laurie is, having, is, is dating Paul Newman. They live together, sort of, I guess. And they're, they're having a picnic on a hill, and they're talking... And she says, I love you, and he ignores that. And then she says, I love you again. And he says, do you need the words? And she says, yes, I do. And if you say them, I'll never let you take them back. And he doesn't say anything. That ah, truth hurts. How do you guys not know that? What do you know? Do you know anything? No. Okay. Yeah, terrible. I, had a, I gave a lecture on probably Lasker, although it could have been before Lasker. It was a week or two ago. And they were gawking rabble in here watching live, like six of them. And I made a reference to falling down, and nobody had seen falling down. How do you have six guys in a room that are adults, and none of them see falling down? That's not even possible. And that was the maddest I've ever been in my life. Ever. Yeah, terrible. Right. Exactly. Mm. 
Terrible. Falling down is not good. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's right. I know. That's right. Harrison Ford got it right in Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, terrible. Uh, that's right. Why doesn't the... Look at this. Flat, terrible, not juicy like the picture. Etc. I don't know anything about Twin Peaks. However, my brother knows everything. So if you ever see my brother in the chat, MJ Feingold, he can answer your Twin Peaks questions. And, and Star Trek questions. The movies and the series. Uh, yeah, he could explain Twin Peaks to you. Yeah, He's the world's leading authority. Uh, okay. I mean, this is the worst move ever. And Anand, for the first time in his life, was choking on his own rage. This, this move is so bad. And I have an opinion which makes no sense. But I have to have some opinion. Okay, in this position, in my opinion, I think Adiban, for reasons that make no sense, so that's why my opinion is sort of weird, I think he only looked at this at this move, which is idiotic, and then this, and you know, it's a draw, but white's better. And I think he just forgot that you don't have to take stuff. So, I mean, this wins immediately, which is what happened, and this also wins. But I think he just thought that. I don't, I don't know what he thought. Because this is forced, and then after C2, he resigned. So I... I don't know. It's just totally nonsensical. So he played here because he has to, and then you know, he's out of peace. Then he resigned. That's the kind of blunder you guys make, not, not Adiban. Adiban's a beast. If you don't believe me, you can ask Magnus Carlsen, who tweeted the beast. Yeah. Man, you got to have an opinion. I don't even have an opinion. No. My brother knows too much about Star Trek for you plebs. He can't, you know, he just can't do it. All right. Next. Okay, this is also from the Vidit Adiban tiebreaker. This was the longest game ever played except for one thing. Okay, now in this position, Vidit, who won the first game of the tie break, needs to draw or win this game, and he wins the match. And lucky for him, because of what transpired over the last five moves, Black is completely lost. So you could take the knight this way, you could take the knight this way, you could take it with a wiffle ball bat, so Black's on the run, the knight got his gun. I mean... These moves just win a piece. Black's up a piece. White's up a piece. Black has a modicum of compensation. I mean, you know, he's got two pass pawns that are not dangerous. Okay, and the engine says, like, plus two. And instead, he plays for tricks, but Vidic didn't realize tricks are for kids. Played this move, terrible. Not taking the free knight. And now, actually, Black's better. Um, yeah. So he played knight e5. I guess he missed that. I don't know. Ask it me. And the reason this is good is because of a trick that's very hard to see. And white played this move, but if white plays the obvious, frankly, knight takes and then says, hey, I'm up a piece. Look at me. Then bishop b3 is annoying. And probably when he played knight b6, he just missed that. He missed bishop b3 was strong. So now he saw bishop b3 was strong. So he played queen e3, but c'est pas différence. <laughs> Knight c4. And if you want to win a piece, you have to take the queen. If you don't take the queen, you're just lost. Two bishops, passed pawn, what else? You got you to take the queen. And then it's the same thing. And this is better for black. Rook b8. And actually, in this position... Rook b8 is an error, 
um, which is easy. It's not easy to see why it's an error. Rook c6 is better. And after rook here, knight d7, maybe white's not lost. But knight d7 is not possible. I mean, it is possible, but knight d7 attacks the rook. So rook here was just more accurate. Okay, so they took the rooks. Bishop went to e2. Now, he could have played bishop a4, which is interesting because he's trying to trap um, the knight. But the engine says this is a little bit better. And this position is a two-result a two result position. Either black wins or it's a draw. Black needs to win to, to win the match, just to tie the match and go into another playoff. Okay, so that's what happens. And... I really, 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 really did not like Black's technique at all. And if my student played like Adiban, I'd be really mad. Okay, Black should never trade pawns, ever. And as Vichy pointed out, the winning plan is to play f6, king here, king here, g5, create a mating net, create a passed h pawn. And Adiban played insanely, in my opinion, but he still won. But this shouldn't be a difficult win. These pawns are all weak. The bishop is masterful. Black has a simple plan of checkmating his opponent or taking all these pawns. And instead he just traded everything. It's terrible. I've never been so angry. Okay. So first of all, I don't like that black let white play knight takes e5. I don't like that. That bishop is fantastic. The engine says it's okay. It's not my cup of tea. Okay, and white, black's still winning. And Vichy gave a really nice winning idea. Put the rook here and get the king on this side. I mean, you can't you can't move your king over and stop it. This pawn's not defensible. You got to keep your king. After rook f6, you have to decide where to move your king. If you go to g2, you know, here comes the king, just like in the game. And you want to have as many pawns as possible if you have black. If there's no pawns on the board, it's a draw. Rook against bishop is a draw. And Aniban trade all the pawns. Come on. Ah, oh, horrible. Okay, the engine says it's fine, but that's just the wrong, that's the wrong way of playing. And then when he played h4, I was even madder. That doesn't make any sense. And he's very lucky that he won this because you don't know if you're winning. And what he should do is try to do the same kind of maneuver, put the rook on the g file, and then run that king over. And it's very hard to stop that because you gotta you gotta stay on this pawn. So once once the black rook is on g5, we can run away like this. So h4 I thought was too soon. Now we weren't sure if it was a win or a draw. I'm still not sure. By the way, just for fun, because you gotta have fun in life. The first engine move, which doesn't do anything, it's just funny, is bishop h3. Just because it's funny. Gotta have fun in life. Doesn't change anything. Black Black still plays the same plan, but this is stalemate, which is funny. Bishop H3 is a move a human would consider. Okay, so they did nothing for forever. So Anand was pretty happy. And I was like, why are you so happy? And Anand said to me, Black's doing Vishwa nothing. That's exactly what he said. Alright. And you gotta have patience. Guns and Roses agreed. Yeah, we thought he was going to play rook f2 here, but he played rook e2, which also wins. Yeah, now the important question is what happens here? And then I just defend my pawn, and this pawn is not savable. So he has to go here, and eventually the king does get around, um, Beach Boy style. Round, round, get around. That king gets around, yeah. Anand was unhappy because black was making too many boring moves and not doing his plan. But then he sort of liked what Black was doing because he was killing the bishop. The bishop can't go here, gets captured, can't go here, can't go here, can't go here. And if it plays bishop d7, rook d8 wins the bishop. So the bishop was uh, didn't have a plethora of squares. And then he, he shouldered him out. King takes. And this is an easy win. And I thought the win might take a long time. But that's only if the white king is over here. And the reason is, if my king is here, 
if it's not on e2, if it's on here, 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 then if you play rook takes e4, I take the rook and play king e2 and it's a draw. But the king can't get back here. So now when you take on e4, you just win. So white has to get his king back here to make the win difficult. But now he just played here and then resigns. Because I go here, I go here, I go here. You could actually, you could actually pre-move that. Yeah, you could pre-move this, this, and this, except they're playing on a real board, so they get in trouble if you pre-moved it. But yeah, after rook takes e4, and we take the rook and they take, white needs to play king e2 there. That's not going to happen. So this is the easiest win ever. It was 99 moves. And in a must-win game, Adiban won. The day before, in a must-win game, Adiban won. Adiban's down 1-0 and he wins. He's down 1-0 and he wins. And now they got to play, you know, playoffs. We're talking playoffs. So that was an amazing victory because it was very quick chess. And Black was squeezing and squeezing and squeezing and squeezing. And eventually he won. These players are really evenly matched. I mean, it's Vidit's a better player in my opinion. But I think as the time gets quicker and quicker, you know, Adiban's pretty tricky. Adiban's beaten a lot of... 2,700 players in his life. Drew subscribed. Good. Good. Go, Drew. Uh, Keto7 subscribed. Michelle Kier, with Kier, rated with a party of 288. Go, Michelle, but stay there. Yeah. LJ Gonzi cheered 999. Did everybody give a shout out to Michelle? Anybody? Anyone? Aha, Mubak gave us a shout out. Pretty good. Tensor extension. Oh, there we go. All right, last seen playing chess. Very good. That's a big raid. We love big raids. Ben's busy. I was busy. So it's funny. One of my favorite movie lines is, I was busy. And for some reason, my friend Aviv, that's one of his favorite movie lines. And nobody else in the world would know what that line's from except me and Aviv. It's just the way it was, the way the line was given was great. Now, I've already told you where it was from, but you forgot. In the original 48 hours, there's a scene where a guy gets out of jail and he goes to where his car is parked in a lot. The car has been parked there a lot, a long time because he's, he's been in jail. So he gives the guy the ticket and the guy says, your car's been here for three years? And the guy says, I've been busy. The way he said it was really funny. <laughs> he was busy. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Aviv good at movies? No. No. Terrible. <clears throat> uh, Nick Nolte? Yeah. Office space? Terrible. Anyway, he was busy. Thanks for the raid again, Michelle. Uh, great. Don't forget to watch your stream and so forth. The last Michelle that I knew played chess was Michel Jadoul, and he's a guy, and he spells his name M-I-C-H-E-L. He's a Belgian IM, and not only is he an IM, which in the 80s was really good for Belgium, they had no GMs, so he was number two in Belgium, I think. He was also, as I've said earlier on many streams, but you forgot, he was at the famous soccer game in Belgium where some of the people didn't come home alive. He was at that game. He, he saw the, the violence. You guys know when that game was. It was sometime between like 84 and 87. I don't know. Somewhere in there. Famous game. <clears throat> so go Michel Jadoul. Michel Jadoul. Son les mots qui vont très bien ensemble. Très bien ensemble. Go Michel Jadoul. <sighs> Delicious. Yeah, Hazel. That's right. Go Hazel. Man, you forgot some of the better cities like Liège. Is Liège underwater? Probably it's not a good city then. You forgot Ostend on the sea. That good tournament's there. Yeah. I am from Belgium. That's correct. My son was born in Ixel in Brussels at the hospital Dixel. Yeah, true story. I lived in Brussels for four years. God damn. Near the Avenue de la Toison d'Or, the Golden Goose. 
Man, our rent was cheap. The dollar was strong then. Go U.S. dollar. Bruges is good. Yeah. And so forth. Uh, yeah. 